Hello, today we're going to have a look at something I used to think was pretty amazing back in the 1980s, rewritable, non-volatile storage on a solid state media. Today we take things like SD cards for granted, but back then all we had was the magic of EEPROMs. With the BBC Micro there were a couple of main ways to run your program. The first was to load it into RAM from tape or floppy disk. Hard disks were available but not commonly in use on home computers. The second method was from ROM, a physical chip that usually came mounted in a cartridge that you plugged in and loads up instantly on power up. Also, the software would not take up any of your precious RAM, leaving more space for your documents or programs. But the problem with ROM chips is they can't be updated, so if a new version of the software comes out, there's nothing you can do about it. But with EEPROMs, erasable programmable read-only memory, not only do they retain their contents when the power is disconnected, but if a new version of the software comes out, they can be cleared and reprogrammed with the new data. And EEPROMs appear just like normal ROMs in the computer, so if you want to change the operating system or update something like the disk filing system, you can reprogram them and the contents will be there as soon as you turn the computer on. The EEPROM I have here is a 27128A. The 128 is because it has 128 kilobits of capacity. That's 16 kilobytes. The A means a lower programming voltage. You can see this is 12 and a half volts written on top of the chip. This is important when using the programmer. You can't write data directly using the BBC Micro, but instead you need a special EEPROM programmer. My programmer is suitably vintage. You can tell by the nice brown and cream coloured metal case and this weird cable as well as a plug with an embossed label on it. My programmer plugs in underneath the BBC where there are a lot of connectors hiding. It uses the one megahertz bus interface with a ribbon cable, which can be laid flat and routed out neatly behind the computer once it's connected. The next thing I need is the software to program onto the ROM. I'm going to use a recently updated version of the basic editor a full screen basic program editor I frequently use. I can get this by downloading the new version and writing the file to a virtual disk on an SD card to be read using MMFS on the BBC. I can then insert the card into the SD card interface in the user port underneath the computer. On the BBC I can now insert the right virtual disk and see the file. I first like to check the ROM is good by loading it into one of the sideways RAM banks first. Bank 6 is free, so I'll use that. Star SR load loads the image into ROM, 8000 is the start address of the sideways RAM area, and Q speeds things up by overwriting the main memory during the load. Now I still have the old version in Bank 2, higher numbered banks should take priority, but I'll unplug the old one first just to make sure. And we can control break, and it should show up with star help, and we can test it out with star BE, and write a little program to try it out. looks good. OK, now we need the software to program the EEPROM. This is a sideways ROM too, but I typically just load it into a spare RAM bank when I need it. We'll use bank 7, and after a control break, we can start it with star EEPROM. The next thing we do is place the chip on the programmer. It has a ZIF or zero insertion force socket, which we can drop the chip into and lock it down easily with this lever. Back at the EEPROM software, the first screen asks me to select what type of chip I'm programming, so I pick option 3 for the 27128 and it goes to the main menu. Now these chips are actually 27128As with a lower programming voltage of 12.5 volts. You can see at the top of the screen the default voltage is 21 volts, but there's a secret key to adjust this, Control v You must be careful not to use too high a voltage as this will usually permanently damage the chip. The next thing I do is check the EEPROM is blank with option 2. A blank EEPROM actually has all the bits set and the programming process just clears the ones that need to be zero, so this just confirms the chip is full of hex FFs. I can now load in the file containing the ROM image into the RAM buffer in the software. Because I did control break, MMFS is not the current filing system anymore, so I need to select that and select the correct virtual disk. Now I can load the file into the buffer in RAM. Once loaded I can check that it looks correct with option 5. You can see the ROM title string near the beginning of the buffer. Once I'm ready to go I pick option 3 and it writes it to the chip. Before doing this it's a good idea just to check that the voltage hasn't changed. Okay, and now you sit back and wait. Uh, maybe even have a cup of tea. 
the uh, numbers you can see on the screen are the addresses of the individual bytes being programmed on the EEPROM. It takes about two minutes to program a 16K EEPROM on this programmer. I understand some other programmers use a slower interface and took a lot longer, um, but this one's fairly quick and not really too long to wait. Once writing is complete, the ROM will be read back and verified against the buffer again. And if this passes, you're all good. Okay, now you've burnt your ROM, you'll want to test it out. So you can do that either by uh, inserting it into one of the sockets on the motherboard of the BBC, or if you have a master, you can use one of these external cartridges that fit in through these uh, cartridge slots on top of the computer. If you want to quickly test it out, you can get one of these special cartridges that has a ZIF socket on it, which make it really easy to test it before you transplant it into a real cartridge. But today we're going to go straight for putting it in the final cartridge here. You can get the old chip out using a screwdriver, gradually prising it up at each end, but it's much easier to use one of these chip extraction tools. You must also be extremely careful to evenly pull it straight upwards and not to bend or snap the pins whilst trying not to touch them and avoid giving the chip an electrostatic shock. To insert the chip, you first have to orientate it so that the notch is at the pin one end, as shown by these arrows. You then have to carefully align the legs with the holes in the socket. It's sometimes useful to gently press them against a hard surface just to get them all in a straight row. And, once everything's lined up, give it a firm press down into the socket. Once this is done, you can insert the cartridge into the slot on the top of the BBC Master and turn it on. If all is good, the new ROM will show up in the list with star ROMs, and star help will show the new software, just as it did when it was loaded into a RAM bank. And I can run it with star BE, and it looks good. Now that the chip's tested and working, you should cover the little window on the top to stop UV light getting in and destroying the contents. I like to cut a short piece of black electrical tape to cover the window, and then use a label printer to identify what's stored on it. And we're all done. But what about the old chip? Well, I like to blank these immediately and check they've cleared OK before putting them back in the box to be used again. Erasing is done using one of these EEPROM erasers. I don't have a vintage one. This was under a tenner on eBay, but they haven't really changed. It's essentially just a box with a UV light on a timer. When the timer runs out, the light turns off. The first thing to do is peel the label off the chip, covering the window on top and expose the surface inside. The UV light resets the chip and is why you have to cover it after writing. The amount of UV light in daylight isn't very high, so you can get away with a few minutes during testing, but after a while it will gradually start to blank, resetting the bits back to one and losing your data. We then put the chip in the eraser, close the drawer, set the timer for 30 minutes and switch it on. We can then sit back and leave it to erase. Once complete, we can take the chip out of the eraser put it in the programmer and run the blank check. I don't believe the voltage level affects reading, but just the writing, but I think it's safer to set it just in case you hit the wrong button. If the check passes, you can stick it back in the box for next time. If it fails, you can have another try in the eraser, but they do eventually go bad. So there you go. All that for 16k of software, but just like my computer science teacher Mr Cullum used to do back in the mid-80s with his custom version of the Watt for Electronics DFS. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, thanks for watching, and see you next time.